Hey guys, it's me, Freddy Pop Collector, and today we're going to be discussing even more common Five Nights at Freddy's misconceptions. I've made two previous videos covering Five Nights at Freddy's misconceptions, and today we're going to be doing a part three. FNAF misconceptions have been around ever since the franchise was created, whether that be about the lore, characters, gameplay, or even some of the merch. Today we're going to be exposing some of those FNAF misconceptions, but joining me today is actually another fellow FNAF YouTuber in the FNAF community, Maso777. What is up, Freddy Pop Collector, and what is up? up all of Freddy Pop Collector's viewers. If you don't know who I am, I am Maso777. I also make FNAF videos. I mostly do FNAF merch concepts, and I also make FNAF reviews. I also do some other stuff on my channel too. If you want to check me out, I'm sure Freddy Pop Collector has a link to my channel in the description. Hope you all enjoy the video, and I hope I don't suck. Me and Maso have also done a collab over on his channel covering the FNAF 3 NECA concepts. Go check that out. I'll leave a link in the description. But with all that out of the way, let's discuss even more common Five Nights at Freddy's misconceptions. The first misconception I want to bring up is the misconception that Scott had the entire franchise and story planned out from the beginning. This was actually debunked by Scott Cawthon himself in the Daco interview way back in 2018. Like, I, you know, I, I didn't, I did not have the entire story planned out. I don't know why, but for some reason, a lot of people to this day still believe that he did for some reason. This is very similar to that whole Bite of 83 versus Bite of 87 debate in FNAF 4. Because it's been rumored and spread around for so long, some people have just chosen to believe it. But as you just heard from Scott Cawthon himself, he didn't. So the first misconception is that Dark Springtrap is based on Dave. This is not true. Uh, Dave is the main antagonist throughout the main FNAF books, uh, the Silver Eyes, Twisted Ones, and Fourth Closet. But um, people think that Dark Springtrap from the Twisted Ones merch line is based on him, and this is not true. A Funko employee stated that Dark Springtrap is supposed to be Springtrap from the last Sister Location Fazbear Fright cutscene, when Fazbear Fright was all burned and stuff, and then Springtrap came out. Next up is probably the most recent misconception to be put on this list, that being the misconception that Funko lost their Five Nights at Freddy's license. For the 2% of people out there who don't know this, Funko actually leaked the designs of the Security Breach characters and Scott wasn't too happy about it. When Scott responded on Reddit, a lot of people thought that Funko was going to lose their license and I honestly did for a little bit as well. All the talk you've seen about Funko losing their license on YouTube videos, on Reddit, memes, it's all been just speculation, nothing's been confirmed by Scott directly. And since we're getting teasers for future plushies like Security Puppet and Freddy Frostbear, it's pretty safe to assume that they won't be losing their license anytime soon. And the next misconception is that Freddy Frostbear and Ape Baby are skins. This is not true. A lot of people think Freddy Frostbear is a skin because he is a remodel of Freddy with a few modifications, but no, he is actually his own character, he has his own slot, he has his own CPU, and he also freezes the screen, which is different from normal Freddy. He also has his own unique animations. Same with 8-Bit Baby. 8-Bit Baby does reuse Baby's uh, voice lines and some of her mechanics, but she does have her own character slot and CPU. And the final misconception we'll be going over in this video is that the puppet is female. While yes, a female spirit does possess the puppet, Elizabeth, no! Henry's daughter, the puppet animatronic itself is actually a boy. This is confirmed to us in the Freddy Files. Under Puppets Inventatory, it says that the puppet is male, but how can that be if a female possesses the puppet? Well, the only other case here is that the puppet itself is male. And with all that being said, that's gonna wrap out part three of Common Five Nights at Freddy's Misconceptions. Thank you so much for joining me today, Masso. Of course, I'll leave a link to your channel in the description. Go sub to Masso, guys. He's so close to 100k. I think he's like 12k away or something. As I said in the beginning of the video, we did a collab over on his channel, so go check that out. I also wanted to thank you guys so much for 31,000 subscribers. We hit it just a few days ago. I can't believe we're already on 31. Thank you guys so much. And with that all being said, that's all I have for now. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like and subscribe if you're new. Tell me in the comments if you guys want a part 4. Leave a like if you want a part 4. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. Sub to Masso.